Welcome to a new episode on geological modeling. In the previous episode, we created a 3D volume using QGS and ParView. This time I will add simple shear strength as an example how to include parameter data, and to show how using a 3D volume can for example help identify a compressible near-surface zone associated with a geotechnical hazard. In order to create our volume we started with QGS where we draped the grids of points on the raster surfaces and then we merged them into pairs representing the strata tops and bases. We then exported each pair from QGS as a CSV file and uploaded them for 3D interpolation into ParView. To display data from CSV format, we use table to point filter. Finally, to create volumes for the Cretaceous, we used 3D interpolation and then adjusted the display properties. The same steps we repeated for all layers and by clipping the bottom volume we even created a normal fault surface separating the upper and lower Cretaceous. I will now add CSV file containing geotechnical test results done on samples taken from the boreholes. To display the shear strength data I will again use table to point filter and adjust their coordinate fields and display in pipeline properties. I will adjust the display properties of the color scale, data points and limit the display to strata with shear strength data. The layer which has been tested is thin, and I will increase the vertical exaggeration for these strata by increasing Z value in the scale property field. After adjusting the exaggeration, I am continuing by selecting points where the shear strength exceeds 100 kPa and to exclude from my model the zone that has the potential to generate geotechnical hazards, such as uneven or excessive settlement of building foundations. Again, I have extracted only the points where shear strength above 100 kPa was recorded. One simple option would be to use 2D DLNA triangulation in PAR view. The drawback of this method, particularly with limited number of data points, is that the results of this triangulation will be limited to the elevations recorded in the boreholes. Instead, I will export the point set representing the top of the competent zone and return to QGIS for interpolation. After loading the data points, I will use universal cryging for interpolation. This option is a good choice to capture both the spatial variability and trends of the data. This may be the case when trying to predict the maximum depth of the weak zone proven by the low shear strength results. Once I have interpolated the data, I can drape a grid of points over the raster surfaces. For comparison, I may also use the thin plate spline method, which gives a smooth surface and is not limited to the range of elevations of the data being interpolated. Then merge the results with the point set representing the ground surface. I also need to adjust the attribute fields of the new layers for export and uploading them as CSV file into ParView. I am finally loading the point set prepared with universal cryging. After displaying points I will specify the coordinate fields and adjust vertical exaggeration. Next I will apply 3D interpolation and display the 3D representation of the zone of lower shear strength.
As we can see in the central part the zone extends into the top part of the Pleistocene deposits, which is something I could correct. To compare the interpolation results, I have also loaded the point set prepared with thin plate spline. Generally, this dataset does not differ significantly and may equally be used as universal cryging. In the next episode we will explore other methods of assigning parameters to the geological volume. If you have enjoyed this video press subscribe. Write comments, maybe you have any suggestions regarding type of parameters you would like to include in the model. Thank you and see you again.